Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, if you saw our last video, if you didn't, go watch it. Uh, uh, we got a new Saab, and uh, that was a 900 uh, Turbo, NG900 that is. Three door even, very special. And uh, this is probably the first time we have gotten two cars in a week. Well, actually not, because we got the 96 and the Classic 900 at the same day, so I guess that's, uh, that counts as well. But we got another one. This time, the, I got one. this one, and the other one is actually my girlfriend's. And this one, not the car behind me, uh, the one in front of me here, this one I got for free. Yeah, no kidding. Absolutely no money. Uh, I was uh, I was tasked to basically get it out of where it was uh, where it was stashed. I do believe it was uh, you have to remove the car because it was actually parked at a private uh, company, and uh, it took up space. So uh, I was I've actually all actually uh, worked in this car before. I had to replace a fuel pump on it, which is very common on these things, and. Uh, well, that was back in 2017, so uh, there was a couple of years since 2017. What is that? Like eight years ago now? Man, time flies. Well, talking about flies, it's just a fly just uh, sat on my hand there. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take a look at uh, what I got myself into here. Uh, it's actually pretty cool, and um, I don't know. This this perhaps may be a keeper actually. Well, it is not my beautiful NG95, which is standing here awaiting some parts. The um, the uh, belt tensioner actually failed on it, so it actually ripped apart the belt. Uh, it has made a noise from the belt a long time before that happened, so it's amazing that the belt didn't uh, break earlier. It's You can still drive it, but uh, the, the, it has ripped about two uh, ribs of the belt, so it only has a four rib belt, not a, a, a six a six rib belt now. So that's uh, pretty cool. Also need new rear brakes, but I'll take that at the same time. So that's in here for now. Let's turn over around to the other car here. Yep, it's another nine five, but this one is a uh, early one. I actually do. I l absolutely love these things. This model here is a two thousand and two. 95 vector 2 liter uh, manual. Nothing special about it actually, but it has some mods, which is pretty cool. Uh, not many, but it has some. Uh, the engine compartment on this, it's pretty basic. Uh, nothing to see really. It's actually just a B204, B205 engine. Nothing special. And um, so that's, uh, that's nice. It has halogen. Headlamps, uh, I don't know what I think about that. I don't know how much job it is to actually convert it to a Xenons because I do have my other 95, which I, I'm i thinking of actually replacing the minor 95 with this one because this one is better uh, in, in the body-wise shape. Um, it has some ugly 18-inch uh, uh, rims with some absolutely trash tires. I mean, who even buys these things? Um... Also, oh, I didn't use the brakes a lot, I have to use them. It has 314 millimeter brakes on it, which is really cool. I actually have a set of, the, of these laying in my shelf because, uh, well, I want to do a big brake upgrade on the other one. And it looks like these are actually in good condition. A lot of pads were left there. Uh, see in the rear here. And these are actually do look replaced. Uh, pretty recently and this is probably the worst part and uh, before you start uh, yes it is rust but uh, no it isn't actually that bad it is quite pitted uh, but it's still solid and uh, that's kind of the important bit here so I have to basically remove this inner plastic guard here and this bumper here and just file away basically this whole area here because it also has hair, which I started. And uh, I could probably take it actually from this line here and just repaint this whole section. Uh, that will also, also probably work. Uh, but it's pretty straight. I mean, look at the metal here. The panels are in actually very good condition. 
um, thinking about what the, he has done because a couple of kilometers. It's pretty good with rust when it comes to the dog legs, which is uh, amazing with these cars. In the rear, we got a Hirsch wing, which is pretty nice. We got not one, two uh, boom pipes, where I like to call them, because if you look inside them, it can't really see. Um, the actual tube that goes through the resonator or through the muffler to well keep the insulation in place that has rotted out because that's a very fact that's a very common thing with these Simon's exhaust systems. So yeah, the, this car doesn't have a tube in it, so it's just a matter of time before that the insulation just uh, flies out of there. Uh, rear hatch is trashed. Uh, I do have another one, one another hatch. What the heck is sitting here? That's a fly, actually. Look at that. Uh, so this is pretty bad. You can see, I can press this. This is absolutely toast, which is which is a shame because there's only this spot. The rest of the hatch is actually pretty in good condition. It almost looks like it has a, actually had a respray re earlier. Yeah, two liter turbo. Nothing special there. Tinted windows. Uh, Okay, tint job, not really the best, but it uh, looks like it has been starting to loosen up in, in the rear here. Looks like yeah, it has a little fold here, or a little spot there. Uh, no biggie. This side, look at the wheel arch. This is almost perfect. Well, almost, I said that, because there is some started here, but again, solid. Uh, inside, well, it's not really open, I can see. Well, I can see here, that knife is actually holding the window up because I do suspect that the rollers are bad. This has the 2006 uh, and up door panels, uh, which is fine. Uh, speed parts mats here. Um, yeah, somebody has been in here. Uh, the guy I got this from, actually, he had an issue with the car because the uh, the only key that this car had was lost. And that, that's an issue. Yeah, <laughs> that is an issue. And what happened was um, he ordered a new key and barrel for the ignition, uh, as well as the twice module uh, with that key. So, uh, and uh, that, that is actually a very good uh, good start because that's actually what you're supposed to buy, but it's not everything. You also need to buy, or not buy, but you need a Tech 2. You do need a Tech 2 or a guy with a Tech 2 to actually do something with it. And uh, he didn't have that. And also the one of the guys he to talked to said that uh, it was a mechanic that tried and said that uh, he, he said he was programmed and should work. Uh, but they suspected that something else was wrong, and that's why they gave up on it. So I went to just look at it and uh, found out that actually it just needs to relearn. The whole computer system needs to relearn, and that's what I did. So I relearned everything with the Tech 2, and uh, it actually does run, start and drive, start and run. Uh, but this car needs to go in the lift, uh, not really today because I don't have really have time today. But it need, desperately needs. Um, drop the oil pan because it does have a slight valve tick, uh, which is uh, concerning. Um, older Pioneer stereo, a actually working cup holder, which is nice. Uh, heated seats works on both sides, that's nice. LED uh, roof lamps here. Yeah, that works. Uh, yeah. Looks like actually the battery is holding up, so that's nice. Uh, same door panels here, and the same as the in the rear. Uh, actually, the rear seats are in pretty okay condition. They are the same as the fronts. The uh, middle belt is actually uh, kind of snug there. I have to loosen it from uh, down uh, from the car because it is locked in that position right now, and you cannot really get loosened because if you tilt the whole seat forward to actually loosen the slack on this. The lock is still engaged because you cannot do that. Uh, because if you tilt the whole seat belt assembly, it will out auto lock. 
Uh, I haven't. I don't know if you've ever noticed or ever done this, but if you drive your car and, and, and park it in a very, very steep hill, you will have an issue putting on your seatbelt because the car actually thinks that the car is about to roll and it actually locks the seatbelts up. Um, but yeah, overall nice. I am planning to replace this interior if I'm actually keeping this car. And uh, there's a lot of good with the car and there's also some things that I do not like with it. Um, for example, the good parts. It is a manual, which I like. It is a facelifted 2002 up or 2005. So that's nice because I have a lot of spare parts for these things. Also, I like the O2 up because of the better chassis they have. Um, and um, well, yeah, other than that, uh, this car does not have or appears to not have ESP or TCS, which is interesting. Um, it's very actually very interesting. Um, only ABS car, 2002 Vector, I only have the ABS. That's a uh, very uncommon here in Norway. And the linear, it's yeah, in the arc models you can get, or in linear models you can get with the on ABS only on these models. But the most most common actually in Norway is the ESP model. The TCS comes as a second, and uh, this is very interesting. But um, I, I now I'm wondering how much of a hassle is it to rebuild the car to a ESP system car because the ESP works on the on the bus system on the CAN bus and this means you could probably just tap into the bus and actually install every component you need uh, which is a um, steering wheel sensor which sits on the steering column and there I do believe there's a gyro sensor something somewhere in the middle console here and of course you need the new ABS controller uh, and with the I believe the actuator as well as well um, other than that, I do believe the car, of course, the car also has to be reprogrammed and relearned to actually support the ESP system. I do not think it has actually what I can, from what I can see from the instrument here, you can see there, it has the ESP off light on it. Uh, but that's a common thing because of the dash has it already. Um... Uh, Yeah, I can see the the all the lamps are there, but they are not activated. Uh, there could be also that they actually the the system is here, but they removed the switch just to hide hidden it behind here somewhere. Uh, let's see if we can get this out. There we go. Well, that wasn't actually fastened that well. Okay, well, I believe the easiest part here is actually just to uh, go into the wind decoder on speed parts and see what that says. Oh, hold on, it has a steering wheel control. That's nice. Well, I cannot feel a cable down here that's loose. So this is probably because this, since this is a 2002 and not a 2004, 2005, the um, ESP button should be here. On the later model, the 2004, 2005, the ESP button is here somewhere. One of these buttons here. Uh, also, I want to build this to the newer style SID. That is actually possible because uh, there are, uh, the most of the cables are here. It's actually just the best bus driven. I can actually see here, this one right here, the white and the green, that's the power bus right there. So there you go. Um, and it looks like this is tapped into the blue wire, which I do believe is uh, for, well, the bus, you know. Uh, this thing, how easy it is to get, looks like it's locked. I do have a need to get some tools to unlock it. Uh, but I do believe I do actually have that, so that's nice. Uh, I want to replace this because this is an old unit. Um, let's see if it starts. I haven't, uh, I just got here now today, and I uh, haven't started it since I got the car. Uh, it was actually yesterday, but the battery was completely dead when we picked it up. A bit of slack in the gear shifter here. 
kohta. See here? Oh, weak battery. It does appear that it does not have ESP because you, you would see the light actually flicker here because of the low battery. Um, the exhaust is atrociously loud. Uh, this is actually way too much for me. Oh man, no! Broken light bulb. It actually has three bulbs in here, three small ones, but that's not an issue. You can Now you can only fasten, but you don't know what you're supposed to fasten, you know? Uh, right now, there is actually no Baltic. Yes, it also has a removable trailer hitch. That's nice. That's a <laughs> that's a nice job right here. <laughs> Also, the rear lights actually look really pretty good condition. I do have a set of new bulbs or new lights if I want, if you need to replace them. Now I can start hearing the valve tick. But other than the valve tick, this run is actually really nice, and there's no chain noise. Well, I take that back. There's slight chain noise, but not much. It has the upgraded advanced tray cans ventilation system. No blow by. Almost looks like it's been polished from the uh, looks of looks of it, the um, all the white stuff here. Uh, factory downpipe. Uh, it does leak oil from the valve cover gaskets. Uh, factory brown injectors, what it, from what it looks like. Slightly leaky throttle body. I haven't looked at this car. This is actually the first time for me as well. Oh, that's nice. Uh, there's a bad engine mount in the front, the dog bone or the uh, torque rod, which is very common. But yeah, I mean, Polish up these things and they will look pretty. Uh, actually, they're actually crack, cracked up. No polishing there. Uh, has some blue one, blue bulbs in there. Uh, by the looks of it, the reflector is good, so that's nice. Uh, it used to have fog lights, but they are removed, as well as the whole plastic under tray, which is a bummer. And also, yeah, if you can see this, yellow shocks that means two things there could be two things in here there could be adjustable conies or they could be bielsteins and these are bielsteins i don't know i have no idea what kind they are uh but i do know they are bielsteins so uh also in the rear and it's it actually reminds me the ride actually reminds me of what i have on my my other 95 uh, and that has the b12 pro kit um, this has your polyurethane brushings in the front. I do not know what it has in the rear. Uh, actually, you can use feel for those, actually. Let's see here. Yeah, polyure polyurethane brushings in the rear, so that's nice. Uh, um, by the looks of it, let's see if they're lowering springs or not. Yeah, those are lowering springs. You can see that by the the windings on the top of the spring are tighter than the rest of it, and that's for comfort. Even though the car actually just sits like that all the time. Um, 
and the car rode absolutely horrible with these tires I do believe they are flat uh, this is actually from 2014 that's pretty bad uh, the rims as I said uh, to get these things usable again uh, you do have to sandblast these and recoat them uh, or actually you do have to do some job that's for sure uh, you can actually you can probably also use sandpaper we can see here the clear paint is uh, flaking off I do have a set of my BBS's so I can throw on this uh, I'm just waiting for my insurance company to actually put on the insurance on the car because uh, they uh, actually reacted to how many cars I've had registered at their, uh, at their uh, well with them and uh, to me that was actually actually not great customer service actually for me but they said that the reason for this is because they do not support uh, buying and selling cars uh, using it for kind of a business purpose and I get that that's not an issue at all but I just own a lot of cars <laughs> and if they did their homework they could just go into the go into the uh, the DMV or the equivalent to equivalent here in Norway and just just check out the, all the registered cars I have of them and see what name they're registered to. Yeah, all of them are mine. And uh, I, said, I told them I have a big garage, I have a lot of subs, and uh, I'm just actually basically just a little collector. I just sell them here and there or or something like that, but uh, I, I don't buy them to sell them. You know, it's that, that's not the purpose here. The purpose here is to actually to buy them and enjoy them or fix them up or save them and probably keep them keep them for a while or give them to somebody that actually needs a a decent car and uh, right now that is me <laughs> my old 95 is not doing really good let me turn off this car here and uh, let's take a look at the old girl So this is what we're doing here today, actually. Uh, finishing up the engine swap on this thing. Um, putting on belts and all the all the holes and stuff. I have started it and it runs, so that's nice. But it was very loud because, well, there's no exhaust on it. Yep, this is a B235R. No, B205R, sorry. And uh, this is a 93 Arrow, if you didn't recognize it. Uh, yes, I still have it, but this is actually sold, so... And don't worry, insurance company, I haven't had this insured at, you, at your place. Here's my car, or the other one. This is the 2005, so the last model year. Actually, in my mind, the best model year, because it got all the good newer stuff, but not the new interior, which I do like. I like the old 95 interior. So you got a nice... Xenon headlamps, you get a nice aero bumper. Well, this is a Vector Sport, so it has the aero bumpers from factory, even though this is actually not the original bumper because the original bumper is hanging there because of the collision damage. Not my fault, some, some lady in the Golf. That's why this fender is also wrong. Um, this car has done 335,000 kilometers, still runs, still drives, no issues at all. The only reason I parked this is because of rust. I did not, I did. I, you could, I could just probably give it in for approval, and it will probably be, just be approved for another two years. But I know that if I got this approved, I would basically continue using it and not fix it, and not fix the rust, because I knew I had to, I would never set up set up time for to fix it. So I actually just forced myself to park it. To I wanted to fix it up, and uh, well, after a while and trying to look at the rust and look some more at the rust. I have determined that the rust on this is pretty su substantial and uh, I do not want to attack it. There's a big, big job and not a no way near enough experienced to do that kind of a welding job because this needs welding. There's no fiberglass fixing this thing. Uh, we could probably could, but uh, you know, that's kind of cheating. But what this car does, ha what is, what's have, what I've done to this car uh, is I've put a, mo a lot of money into this thing which I can take off and reuse, of course. Uh, fully stock B205 uh, engine with a TDO4 turbo, aftermarket TDO4 turbo, uh, with the short neck TDO4 with a big Cobra. Um, stock injectors, basically maxing them out. So this is running about 280-ish horsepower and 410 newton meters of torque. 
Uh, and it also runs on the ED5 if I want. It is a bio, bio power tune, so I can do that. It actually runs really, really nicely on the ED5. Um, it has a uh, 251, uh, 240, 251 liters per hour fuel pump, uh, with e, which is ED5 compatible. Uh, it has the 300, 300, what is that, 308? Yeah, 308 front brakes from the 95 Aero. Uh, those are pretty short now. Uh, I can probably just drive them a bit and they will come around, but uh, you know, brakes are so cheap, especially discs, that uh, uh, these are probably gone. Uh, or, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna put them in the car because the other one has already upgraded brakes, and I, will, I actually had bought three 14 brakes for this, uh, but I haven't put them on because I haven't started work on it yet. Um, the engine on this runs superb uh and it's been the most reliable engine i've ever had uh this thing has been amazing i've never dropped a pan on this thing and from my, what i can tell from the previous records this has never had the pan down Three hundred thirty-five thousand kilometers later still runs like a champ still has excellent oil pressure and it runs 280 horsepower and i've done that for the last 120,000 kilometers yeah, the B205 engine is a really strong power plant. Uh, I would, I would, uh, I would argue even better than the uh, than the 2.3 variant, the B235, because those are known to crack pistons, uh, which is uh, unfortunate, but that's how it is. The front of this car is actually good. Subframe is good. Everything is like that. No dangerous rust, nothing like that. Actually, the, this part of the car, front and forward, is actually in really good condition. But this is a winter-driven winter car, it's a whole deer driven car, and uh, that means everything that splashes from those wheels, well, attacks all the air, and that's exactly what's happened here. Rust spots on the door, this is actually, this started as, uh, when I got the car, just tiny, tiny, tiny dings, and has gotten to this. I got the car in 20, back in 2019, five years ago, and uh, that's how they gotten. You know, I haven't, I just driven the car, so I haven't ha had any time to fix anything. And uh, I just drove it. It was such a reliable car that it just kept driving. And that's why I, what I did. I just kept driving with it. Uh, doors are eaten up by rust. All of them. They are nothing. There's nothing left on these. You can see rust, 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 rust all the way. And uh, completely trashed air. Uh, but they are insulated. You can hear that when you also slam the doors. Also, you can hear that uh, it is insulated compared to... Well, actually... I've done that as well. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit more uh, tight feeling or tight sounding. And this is what I what I found out when I started to cut away rust. There is a quite a substantial amount of rust on the inside of the quarter here, and that's very difficult to fix. Also here, same thing. The inside of the wheel arch is gone. There are actually two separate pieces here. Um, this piece I actually did weld in uh, at the earlier stage of the car. That is actually a stainless steel piece. I just welded it in because that's what that was what I had. I even used a stick welder. And see how well that thing held up. Uh, so this thing, this plate here, is the most solid thing about this arch right now. So <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> amazing, really. Behind here there is a rust hole. I'm just going to look at that. Behind here I have patched up a about an eight inch section of the rocker because that was uh, rusty and hole and were a lot full of holes. And I, uh, I do suspect that the rust has continued along even further because I didn't, did not, I didn't, did not use the proper painting process and I did not undercarriage or actually I did not treat the undercarriage or the inside of the rockers with any fluid film or anything like that. And that's why that's, that's why I didn't hold up. This rear hatch, I did treat with fuel fi fluid film. It doesn't look like it, but that's because fuel fluid film doesn't attack this lip right here, because that's on the outside, the exterior part. But you can see from the bottom of the hatch, yeah, that's a ding, so don't worry about that. There is no rot whatsoever. Yeah, the bottom of the hatch is perfectly fine, also on the inside. No rust whatsoever. <laughs> that's how it is, you know, these cars over time, 
things rub on the paint, it paints chips and rust starts attacking it and it does it in a really, really quick manner. Yeah, it's not open right now. I do not think this even has a lock cylinder in the rear hatch. That's a very common thing with these O5s. They did, they did unfortunately tend to ditch a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I can see there's no keyhole here, nothing. And that's very common. Uh, this side is just as bad, actually even perhaps even worse. You can see cut away a lot of metal here. I haven't done much cutting here because the art itself on this side is actually in better shape. The the uh, the thing is with these car with Norwegian cars or actually cars that rust in general, from what I've actually learned, and that having experienced cars and stuff like that, the side that is actually closest to the end of the road or the you know the you know the opposite side, you know, not the opposite side, but you know to the right here in Norway at least. Um, they will rust on the right side faster than on the left side. I do believe that's because you the all the slush and all the stuff is and salt and stuff is splashing to that side and laying there. But on the other side of the road where the car usually dri drives, it kind of dispersed. It actually it kind of just you know splashes around and you know over time it gets away. But the the edge of the road is never cleaned, so it's a lot of stuff and grime and dirt on the side of the road. And that is that. That's that's why I think the car doesn't last on the right side of the car. The car all is the right side. This door is way worse than the driver door. The driver's door is also of car, of course, attacked with rust, but that's how it is. But this side is way worse in general. Everything in this car, this side of the car, is but it's worse. The floor pans on this is very actually in very good condition. Uh, there is no rust holes in the floor. Nothing like that. The only part that is actually that stops me actually from this, just keep saving this thing is the rockers. Uh, they are a structural part of the car, especially when it gets inside the rocker. Uh, there's no way stopping that. Uh, it will just come back and it will come back and it will come back and it will usually come back way later than it should or not, la not later, but you will see it way too late because it will start rust from the inside out. And uh, that's, uh, that's a bummer, you know? But the rest of the mods, full three inch exhaust, of course. You have to have a run that when you're hearing 280 horsepower or 410 Newton meters, 1.4 bar of boost. Uh, actually peaks sometimes on the 85 even higher. I believe it pulls 1.5 bars boost on the 85 on a good day. <laughs> um, it has the aero wing. Uh, this is uh, something I installed on this thing. Um, I do have the hairstyle wing for this as well. Um, but I never got to that part, you know? So this swing I have actually already sold. Yep, I already sold starting, starting to sell pieces. This has the, the newer style rear bumper, so I'm gonna keep this and actually reuse it on the other car. Um, yeah, you heard my plan here. This car is getting sacrificed, unfortunately. Uh, but to perhaps save another one that's a bit older, but has a lot fewer miles on it or kilometers. Yeah, it's a bit dis disassembled in here. I has the beige interior, this one, but I have started and uh, replacing the front seat, which I'm gonna replace all the seats in the other one with these kind of seats. These are the Aero two tones, which I actually do. I love these, so it's these seats, it looks amazing. Thankfully, the other car has already the black or the dark in uh, inserts in the door panels, actually, the even darker ones. And this has the completely black dashboard. Not the gray one. It doesn't look the black right now because it's dirty. But I do have another one of those that is actual black. It is black on the top and gray on the bottom, just like they should be. And that fits so well with those seats and with the black door cards in the other one. Uh, so this has been a kind of a audio project car for me as well. That's why it has a lot of speaker holes and stuff like that in it. Uh, I can see the door here. Nothing saving that. Yeah. The other thing I'm actually gonna keep from the doors on these things are maybe not the door cards even, uh, because they are I have broken those, but I will keep all the switches, door handles, stuff like that, and I will rip out all windows uh, that, that I can rip out of this car 
even these quarter panel glass or the quarter glass here or whatever they're called uh, because they you cannot buy them anymore they are out of they are not long, no longer produced also the rare glass is no longer possible to get uh, so we'll probably say that as well all the heater elements in this actually works um, and then of course rip off the three inch JT Superflow exhaust which has the actually the wrong tip on it that, that, that is actually a um, that's a part that's a speed parts problem because I've ordered everything from speed parts and I told them uh, the first issue was that when I ordered it I ordered it for a 2002 no 2004 to 2006 I believe it is aero and that's exactly what it's supposed to fit because this is a since this has the aero bumpers the actually the actual tip is actually much more inwards here you can see it's not centered in the hole and uh that's the reason for it because this is actually made for the earlier models or the factory the, the also the, well, the earlier models have the exhaust slightly further out here because this is a, a lot of rounded off edges and this well doesn't actually fit this car and th that means the big oval tip that is actually originally has uh, doesn't fit because it actually just crashes with the bumper and i haven't bothered to even try to rehang the exhaust or something like that but uh you know i'm gonna turn on the light here so we can go over this car a bit here we go okay so now we have lights let's see how it looks inside here <laughs> very very rusty that's how it's supposed to be pretty rusty muffler you know this has been on there for three years now so Actually, it's pretty okay for what it is. It's a very, very cheap exhaust system. Uh, maybe a little rust, rust surface rust here. Wow, they actually, the floor pad and the boot is good on this thing. I should probably just cut it out and keep it, you know? That's a very common issue on this. We have <laughs> General Motors, uh, actually, um, Mud flaps from actually a Chevy Suburban. Uh, you can't, wow, the exhaust is actually still kind of shiny. Uh, I have undercarriage treated, treated this at the, some at some point, so a lot of this actually held holds up really good, uh, especially the subframes and stuff like that. Let's see how it looks here. This is the rocker. You can see the rust. You can always see the rust here. Uh, actually, I can tell that much. If you have to start ripping here, this is not fasten at all and I can see also the amount of sand and dirt that collects here yeah this also has the new style side skirts and of course keeping those I'm keeping the panels worth keeping I believe this actually is in pretty okay condition no actually not keeping this rust and rust actually the whole edge here okay uh, not worth keeping. You can buy these new, so uh, still, so I'm not keeping that. Indicators, US style indicators, I'm keeping those, uh, of course. And I'm dropping the whole power plant and keeping that because uh, it is a, still a very healthy engine. No blow by whatsoever, doesn't use any oil. Uh, a bit corroded now, but this is also the newer style crankcase ventilation system. See the big, bigger Cobra with the short neck TDO4. And how do you actually recognize the TDO4 from just the engine compartment and nothing else? Look at the castings for the wastegate. You can see this, this sits on kind of a uh, long stud or something like that, a long piece of metal there. That's where they basically actually fasten to the turbo. That's why, how, that's how to spot the TDO4. Because the gear turbo is not, does not have those long castings. If I make sense, for example, I'm gonna keep, you know, that one right there, that support there, the long support. Uh, the the gear turbo does not have those. So if you, if you, if you, somebody's trying to scam you and sells to you that um, this car definitely has a TDO4 turbo, just look for that casting, and that's how you spot a TDO4 in the wild. <laughs> um, other than that, pretty good in here. Uh. AC condenser on this is leaking. Uh, actually, it doesn't, it's not leaking, but it's, it's actually pretty bad because when you fill AC gas, it just keeps blowing out to one line, and that is the high pressure line 
down there. It keeps blowing that out. I've replaced it two times now and it still blows it out. So there's probably a valve or something like that that is broken. Um, it has the big diesel intake, the, the uh, snorkel, keeping that of course. Uh, keeping the airbox, I'm keeping a lot of stuff on this car because there's all stuff on it, it's actually pretty really good. It has the B12 Pro Kit suspension uh, with the uh, iBox springs, uh, which makes this car super, super stiff. You can actually see that. Let's put the phone here. The car moves, that's because the tire is bouncing. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, it's actually in way better condition than my car because they have been treated with oil so there is of course some some rust and stuff like that on them but uh, you can't really get away from that they will rust and trust me the conies are actually we even worse than these it has rain, sen rain sensor the other one doesn't have that and that's probably a bigger job to install because you actually requires to have the windshield from the one with the rain sensor um, I could probably just remove this windshield, but it is. What is it like? Yeah, this this is actually eight years old. This windshield here, and uh, I'm not sure that is actually worth. You can see there is it is scratched. So, oh, hold on. Oh, actually, it's not. This is just the markings from whatever is pulled across the glass. Actually, pretty good, Nick. Taking care of all the glass from the door and stuff, Chris said. But yeah, but this is a very good spec car. Electric seats with heat, of course, that's how it is. Um, it has uh, ESP, uh, full leather interior. It actually originally also had full leather interior. Uh, what else actually? A rain sensor. I'm trying to remember what else. They don't, yeah, for me, a, a car doesn't need, really need a lot of, you know, tech. It just needs, you know, the essentials. And for me, this has plenty of not plenty enough. But I do want a rain sensor because it's very nice to have. It's a very a nice thing, you know, to put on, to have in a car. Um, that's pretty much only. Oh, and the ESP. ESP is kind of a must for me, not because I don't don't know how to drive a car and something like that when it's slippery conditions, but it's just very nice to have if it is slippery conditions. Because it's also a very, very, very good traction control system on the on the ESP models. Not like the TCS models that actually just kills all power and kills all joy. The, e, the ESP system actually does allow for some wheel slip. And uh, that is very important for the winter. You have to have some slip to actually have grip. That doesn't make sense, but that's how it is. Because sometimes you actually do want to dig about dig down in the snow to actually get grip. Uh, that's actually the, one of the BBSs there. I want to put it on the car with the uh, Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6 from Goodyear on them. Very good tires. <laughs> really good tires. Um, but yeah. Saying goodbye to these things and keeping the mirrors here because these are the new style mirrors. Um, they're not electric. No, they're not electric. They are, yeah, they are standard foldable. Uh, they are heated, of course, but that's a standard standard issue thing. Um, the airbag situation is the same. Yeah, everything's the same. does not have the outer dimmable mirror. I do not believe that this thing has it either. Thinking about the spec on this thing. Nope, that's the manual. Manual kind. Yep, that's the manual kind. But I do have two uh, automatic ones laying in my parts bin. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's no issue at all actually uh, mounting it because I do have the parts for it. But that's actually not too bad car, uh, but I'm surprised. Uh, aluminum insert, I'm not sure. Oh, this actually has the ashtray. I don't, I don't like the ashtray a bit. Actually, it does well, isn't it? It doesn't even work. Uh, I actually like the uh, dark wood I have in the other one. Better than this, but uh, I can sell this. No issues at all. Uh, some some guy probably wants this. I can tell you that much. Um, also, I do want to move over all the keys and barrels from the other car uh, because all of them work, 
and uh, I do have two keys for that car. And uh, that means I have to program a new transponder, but that's not an issue because what I can do also is actually move the transponder from the key from that car into this key here, and uh, or from replace the transponder from this key or the other key, and uh, keep using the same thing. I'm of, of course keeping the di twice module from the other one car, so I can you know swap it out if we need to. Um, but yeah, this thing is very slow. Also, this is the older style key. The newer style key has a slit cut down the middle of it, not like this very common uh, style of key. So, um, yeah, I have to put back all the interior pieces here. Uh, this was actually very annoying to drive with this because it was actually just keeping <laughs> way of my, it was in the way of my foot all the time because I was putting my foot in the pedal. The carpet is like right there. So I almost didn't have place for my foot. And uh, when you have to put on the brakes, it's pretty, pretty nice to be able to actually push the brakes. <laughs> so you don't hang up with your foot all the time. But yeah, not a bad car at all. Uh, this is going to be actually very exciting. The car is approved for another one and a half years. So this car actually has yes, the insurance is on it. I can drive this legally for one and a half years, which is the best part of it because I don't have to... I do not, do not have to uh, to take it to the approvals or stuff like that. Nothing like that. So I can just just drive it like it is. Let's see here. This is something funny in here. Oh, that's a bad clip there. No loose wires. Uh, yeah, uh, the the halogen lamps is kind of a very big letdown. Uh, I do want I do want to get rid of this switch here and uh, actually get the the leveling sensors working on this car and it is it is possible everything is possible but it's the wiring job i have to figure out i have to figure out how to wire everything up and uh, it has been done it has been done so it's not been possible but you know that's how it is but yeah it has a also a um upgraded speakers i believe those are what are those, what are those? If you recognize that logo, well, you know what it is. Not really sure myself. Uh, let's see here. It does have also tweeters that are just shoved on top of the original tweeters here by Polk. Polk Audio. Actually, that's not, the, that's not a bad brand, actually. So, you're just laying on top of the original speakers there. And they're, uh, hopefully, they're disconnected. <laughs> yeah, rear doors are the factory speakers. Um, but um, but uh, there's also Polk, I do believe it's Polk Audio Subwoofer in the boot. It's a Dual 10, I do believe. And uh, with a very bad amplifier powering it. There's a lot of trash in it. JL Audio, actually. That's what it was. Actually, oh wow, this is a old style JL Audio. Wow, even started to foam rot. Oh, it's actually chambered. Yeah, there are two different chambers. And there is a sealed box. So a sealed box, actually, well, they play better than the open box or nicer. I know this thing plays in the ice, but, uh, you know, that's what it is. So, but yeah. Battery box. Yeah, a lot of stuff. But that's how it is. Uh, wish me luck to fix up this thing. 